Wasiasiem, Heitsepkasiem. Thank you, honored ones, friends. My name is Daniel Elliott. I'm Stamina's First Nations and Scottish. Part of my world is that I, I was seeking humility and and I didn't seek uh, to really have my story told. I just rather lived it. But there's some important parts that have come out from my teachings that I need to express uh, a story around my art and my history and my family that connects to the healing that needs to happen with Canadians and Indigenous. And it's a story through art and food and medicine and culture and family and connection. And I'm going to be honoured to tell you that story. Hi, Sep, Kassiem. Thank you, honoured ones. I struggled with the relationship between Western ideologies and systems and cultural appropriateness for Indigenous people. And I remember feeling really frustrated about not having the words, not having the language to describe what was, what I'm feeling, how I seen things that needed to come out. And, and I was like, wait a minute. I'm an artist and I can paint. And so I, I began to think about how I could paint the truth of what I needed to say. I really combined European art and real fine art training from Europe with my native heritage. And for a long time, it felt like a paradox. It felt like, oh, what am I, how can I express this? There's no language that can convey the feelings of what are my people, what our indigenous people are trying to say. So this art was about what was beautiful about our culture, what was the interruption, we know the interruption, colonization. So a few years ago, 2019, I decided to paint uh, The Winds of Change, Truth, and that's where Truth, Art and Reconciliation is born out of, and I am so honored to be able to share that teaching and those experiences in a way that have not been a part of the whole Canadian vision. I am just filled with emotion in this whole body of work. And so to, to tell this story and how it began, I guess is a game changer for me because I've been a part of my own reconciliation. And I wanted to give a sense of what was beautiful about our culture. So I did one that was before part of the uh, collection of Winds of Change. And it leads itself into the connection that I wanted about what was beautiful about our culture. And so I painted um, almost like a Japanese woodblock kind of painting. And the horizons disappearing in the dark and, and the snow on top of the longhouses. And one of my elders... Uh, that I learned from came to my house and he goes, oh, he says, I danced in that central building there. And, and it was really a, what an awesome connection to see that he was a spirit dancer who danced in that building and he recognized um, that spot for him. So that ju it just there's some canoes and snow and it's a beautiful s story of uh, with before cultural interruption that happened for our people. Truth, Art and Reconciliation is, is a visual form where you don't even need to say anything, but you can experience it. And that's a universal language that I feel honored to connect with. My art is about helping people forge a new relationship. And that new relationship is about understanding and without shaming or blaming, but it's just understanding. And so the art will speak to the changes that need to come and the things that have actually happened. So the new relationship, the foraging is, for me is, is I'm helping people create a new pathway.
Oh, the winds of change. Uh, when I was uh, 13 and we were up in um, a little long inlet up the north end of Cortez Island, we were digging clams in the summertime and it was really, it was hell for kids. But we were working hard picking clams on a hot summer day and we would get thousands of pounds of clams. But the wind would always come up, a breeze would come just when the tide would change to come to flood. And uh, so I was always praying for that breeze to happen. And it, that was the winds of change. And really for a lot of my work in my life, I've rested uh, those pieces. And the winds of change is the work uh, around reconciliation and the truth in a visual form. Cooking is one of my passions. It's one of my favorite hobbies. This Pacific cod here is going to be a, an amazing addition to this big pot of clam chowder. I'm able to now share with young people how to steam clams in a pit, how to split fish on the beach. So all of these attributes and lessons and teachings I learned, I knew that I had to bundle them up, hold on to them, so that one day I could share them. I recognized that I wanted to help empower people, so I was coaching, And but the counseling was a, a game changer. It was life changing for me to do my own personal work and be able to help people through um, their own tumultuous times and experiences as a counselor. So I became a coach of uh, three sports. So I wanted to make a difference in the lives of children and in, in, the, in the sporting world. And I worked in the school system with our First Nation kids. Uh, I worked in with bigger kids in the, in the prison. Lockdown, nightly lockdown. You know, just uh, to see some of them find their spirituality, find them the thread that connects them to their authentic self was beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's been my life's work for the last 20 years, even before there were buzzwords. Uh, around reconciliation. The work has gone on and uh, I'm, I'm just feel uh, inspired that I've been a part of some of those uh, healing pieces that needed to happen and uh, yeah it's uh, beautiful and this <clears throat> and I've really enjoyed my time here at Stabina's Health and having a chance to um, work on the ground roots of, of healing and conciliation. So, yeah. Hi, good morning, Anita. Lately, I've been a counselor in my own community as a drug and alcohol counselor and in Stamina's First Nations and uh, and I find that this work really supports uh, the work that I'm doing as an artist and uh, helping in a way that is part of the solution. I'm not angry, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I'm dedicated, and I'm not taking any prisoners. I'm just going in through life and I'm bringing my family with me and those around me. I say hi to Kasim, thank you everybody. My idea was to get a medicine wheel, which I've been doing for years in the schools and the prisons, and I'd graft it out. Like, here we are. Here's our physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional. I'm hoping to link technology with culture. So I really appreciate the work you've done on this, Dan. Like, I can take... Um... I decided uh, leaving, leaving the field uh, eventually, I wanted to create an app 
uh, and it's a balance of a medicine wheel. And the balance is we have four parts to us, and the app is you can scale it and you can add uh, direction or you have an understanding of where you are right now in this moment based on what I chose to mark as my uh, numbers uh, around where my balance is in each mental, spiritual, physical, emotional being. So you have these numbers and then you can go, oh, so it creates an opportunity for change. So it's an app for changing your experience by what you see and know about what's not in balance in your life. So I'm excited about having this kind of work happen for, for people that have maybe little or no access to, to counseling. I worked as a 16 year old on a, on a West Coast troller and enjoying the sweet smell of our Pacific hauling salmon in over on a troller and cleaning and gutting as a 16 year old. That was the beginning of a 25 year career. So I, I fished commercially on Saners from 1977 to 1998. 12 of those years I became a captain and had my family out and so I, I worked hard and and that work, I worked six months a year and that allowed me to paint. I was happy to be, you know, commercial fishing and painting and with my family and kids and it was a beautiful lifestyle but it changed, fishing changed so I had to make a career choice. I was able to really develop my artwork and train and practice. I have to come in a good way all the time about taking medicine from our forest. And I'm asking the Creator to bless uh, me gathering and offer tobacco in a way that is acceptable in the spirit world. <sighs> being out there and sharing traditional medicine and gathering and and I just felt uh, a very special connection. So I'm taking something and so I'm giving something back so I just want to give thanks even for a little bit. It's around, it's a teaching for me to always respect what I'm taking. So I say thank you with some tobacco. So there's lots of powerful parts to this Devil's Club. It's a very, very distinctive smell to it. Very honored to harvest in this place here. The whole area is medicine. The whole area is a sacred place for our people. Wow, uh, January 30th, 1973, I turned 13. And that was an amazing uh, time in my life. It felt like uh, there was convergence for me and I felt like for the first time in my life because I had been drawing and I'd been uh, trying to express myself as a, a very young artist. You know, we were playing outside. Okay, come on in and eat. Hey kids, cake's ready. <laughs> you got this cake. I remember getting cake back in uh, the 70s. They had a little um, wax paper and they had like quarters and they were stuck all through the cake. And you know, that was fun. I was excited, you know, and, and you know, to get a few presents. And I remember this amazing outcome, this little easel and a few <laughs> little canvases and this little box of oil paints and a tiny bottle of turpentine. And uh, thrill. I was like, oh my gosh, I got my own oil paints. I can paint, paint, paint. And I can remember figuring out a way to shoo the, the birthday party and make it end quick and get everybody gone so I could, I could paint. There you go. You can paint now. I had paints. I had brushes and a little bit of turpentine and a little canvas or a few canvases. So I just started painting on my 13th birthday and 
And I remember surprising myself. And actually, my very first painting at 13, I sold for $5, which was really quite a bit of money for a little 13-year-old. And so when I still smell turpentine, it just brings me back to my 13th birthday party. Transparent Souls was really the very beginning. It was came as a study for me. Um, his name was uh, Stephen David from Sanemo. He was an elder. They're doing something in Vancouver and people bumping into him in the streets and he said he felt like he was invisible. So I, I painted this moment of him looking into this, into your vision saying, I'm here, I'm an elder, I'm Sanemo elder. And, and how can you not see me? I wanted to paint um, my grandmother's story of her uh, getting out of Cooper Island Residential School. And I called it the smoke of torment. And the creator came in the form of an eagle. And in 1975, the building was torn down. But before it was torn down, I decided to paint this eagle ripping the roof off and letting out the smoke of torment, which was the abuses, the improper teachings, the improper cultural teachings, the harm that all happened, and the creator just letting it out. The red herring is a figure of speech. How many times have indigenous people been misdirected by the church, by the government, by agencies, by schools, about what was real and true? So this one ended up being a really pivotal piece for me. So I called it the red herring, and, and I had uh, the intention of Bo Dick, and how could I do that? I ended up finding a, a really cool picture of Zunaqua, or Wild Man of the Woods. And as the bishop, who's on a gurney or on his back, mouth open screaming, and he's leaving the scene, not happy about being ousted, as he's leaving, Zunaqua's coming in as part of the destruction of St. Michael's. So out of the, the hat are coming herring and fish eggs. Of course, our people love eggs and herring. And, and so the red herring coming out is the misdirection of spirituality. So I painted, you know, the, this wonderful picture, and I just feel so beautiful around painting my granddaughter and... and in the kelp doll, and I wouldn't let her see it. I, I, it's a no, you can't see it. And finally, when it was done, it was about a month uh, when it was finished. And I went, Sophia, Sophia it's ready. I'm Come on down. Come, Come and see down, your portrait. See well, she ran down, and like the Matrix, she was sliding on the floor here in slow motion. She's like, oh, and it's like she's seen herself. Uh, a double of herself, and also somebody from maybe 200 years ago. And it was such a, an, a surreal scene to see her uh, almost like looking in a mirror, but not a mirror. And so what a, what a beautiful moment. And, and then she was just kind of gobsmacked with her mouth open, going, oh my God, that's me. <laughs> I first heard about Winds of Change way before it had the name. The beauty of what he could do with paint and with brush and with canvas and with listening to his heart as he talked about his pictures. And it became um, an experience that I'll never forget and that I'll treasure. You cannot see his art without recognizing that you've changed on the inside in some way, shape, or form that you didn't realize before. It's a change that gives deeper awareness, more openness, more desire for peace in our world. I believe the first painting I saw was the one that he painted of uh, JC and the ancestors and listening to Grandpa's voice. I had a a wonderful experience of an elder explaining his uh, journey. And the journey was from the streets to this amazing elder that helps people transform their lives on a daily basis. And he's like this walking guru, uh, one of our 
spiritual advisors for the West Coast. So this watercolor is about him and his grandfather drumming him and singing out of, out of the streets and into uh, never drinking a drop, going into treatment and becoming an elder that people are just absolutely in, enriched and enthralled by his wisdom, knowledge and healing powers and connection to the Creator. I was so glad that my ancestors were there to help me survive that period of my life. So you nailed it there and I really appreciate that painting. When I seen my picture on, uh, I didn't, I couldn't believe. Excuse me. that you got the essence of what I was going through. Mm. I found ways as a young man and a young father to interrupt those institutions and governments and policies and things that need to be interrupted and changed. And that's the change that I've been uh, asking for, I've been looking for. People will understand that so they can heal in a way that allows the interruption and the change and the break in the cycle. So that's, that's the powerful intention I have, is to have this work carry on beyond, beyond my days. When I read the story about Kinkum Inlet, and the, it always bothered me to see this totem pole right beside the church, like this, conflicting energies bouncing off each other and just like, oh, this is just so wrong. So I call this one the Silent Mountains because Kinka Midland is so remote and is only accessible by air or water. These elders decided in 1922 to ask the Indian agent and the priest to carve a pole in honor of King George. And they thought, what a great way to assimilate these guys. So they agreed to it and uh, they said, but you have to put the pole beside the church so that we know you know who the right God is and all that kind of stuff. So to this day, the King George pole is beside the steps of the, of the church, which still exists. And how brilliant. These guys were actually a form of conciliation because <clears throat> these, they said, but in order for us to carve the pole, we have to do ceremony. And they were like, okay, you know. So for a year, they feasted and they danced and they celebrated against the rules of the country for not dancing and not feasting during a potlatch. So this was very clever. So this was really uh, some of the first forms of conciliation. And they were like, we're here with our spirituality, just like you. You know, reconciliation, it's kind of like a buzzword that floats now, and it's almost like you can't anchor it down. And I don't really want to define what reconciliation is, but just the word in the dictionary is about reconciling differences between two groups or two people. But it's more than that. It's about how we can come together in a way that is so healing and helpful. It's a big word, and we're in the middle of it as Indigenous and Canadians, and I see so much stuff happening, and I'm, I'm thrilled and I'm hopeful for what's going to come out of it. After the winds of change and uh, truth, art, and reconciliation, this body of work, uh, I, I, I sat out of bed one morning and I went, where am I going to go next with this whole art thing? And, and, uh, and I have a way of sealing watercolors so that I can show them without glass. But what came to me was, I'll do part of a painting in watercolors and seal it and then finish it in oils. So there's a piece called Conciliation and it's the after part, it's the aftercare of reconciliation. 
And, and I wanted to do something that spoke about coming together as Indigenous and Canadians. And what does that look like? Like oil and water can't mix, but sometimes they can come together. And so I did a piece and I found some product that allowed me to paint part watercolor and part oil. It's a street scene. On the left side, it's got buildings and totem poles. And instead of windows, it's drying fish. And a canoe is surreally paddling down a street. And all these people are taking pictures and they're going, wow, look at all this indigenous stuff. And I, oh, beautiful. I want to take my selfie or take a picture. And, and it's like, they're seeing things happening in Canada. And but they're not really connecting to uh, what's actually really going on. So yes, we do need to reconcile uh, our, our understanding of each other in lots of ways, but it's about conciliation uh, and how we can come together in a way that <clears throat> builds bridges. And so I like to work in this, what I call a liminal space, um, this in-between space, because I'm Scottish and Coast Salish. So how do I do those things? So I'm sitting on this bridge holding two hands and uh, what, a, what a great place to be, to bring worlds together. So this machine has actually unearthed this, this uh, indigenous world, if you will, and out of that, all these powerful women. And so this painting is about the acknowledgement and honor and they landing on the shores of indifference. And it's like, even though they're doing all this beautiful work, Still, there's things around the government. Something that I think is really important about Daniel's paintings is that he's created 14 separate works. And they all tell a story. They all combine to tell a big story. And I was thinking about his works and how each one of them is like a chapter in a book. You know, they all are very relevant. They're very important on their own. They stand alone. And yet they all work together to create this, this big piece called The Winds of Change. I feel so uh, validated by uh, your guys' warm welcome and the dancers. We're moving into a new chapter. We're going to try something different. We're going to become uh, a better way of being. But I want to thank each and every one of you for coming tonight, and I look forward to chatting about some of these paintings. It's been so powerful for me to share this work with those who are hungry. They're, they're, they're wanting an answer. They're wanting a way forward. And, and I'm really proud that this work helps with some of that. I, you know, I heard today, even today, people were like, it was really difficult, some of these pieces, but I really feel hopeful about the future. And so that was um, really what I was after. I think the winds of change definitely can contribute to the healing of us as Canadians. And I think that it speaks to the calls to action from, from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Uh, I think that it should be viewed in schools. I think everyone should see his work. I said to Dan after viewing it and spending time with him that this is the kind, as an educator, I think this is the kind of collection of works and stories that children should be hearing. Young people should be hearing this. Older people should be hearing this. Older people should be viewing his work. I felt like I was um, a part of assimilation, which I really was. No language, no songs, uh, no cultural dances, no connection to my elders. So I, was, I feel honored to have had some amazing elders in my life that I interrupted that whole piece around assimilation. I can become a conduit from what was to what needs to happen for those that come after me. There was a, a study I did called Spirit Dancer Study, and it's quite um, a, an alarming looking piece. And, and I pictured this maybe in a really deep ceremony. He had uh, some regalia on a drum and it's like he's come face to face with the interruption of 
what uh, colonization has done to cultural ceremony and events. And it's the look of its power and its fear and it's a whole pile of emotions. Yeah, so reconciliation for me is, is how um, uh, church and state need to really come together and really own it. Because unless we can really identify it, unless they can identify it, we can't change this. That's when, that's when the work, and it is happening. There's some beautiful things happening around reconciliation. And I want to get to the point where we are experiencing conciliation. And I have a painting called Conciliation. It's about us sharing our treasured values and morals and a way to come together that's really healthy that we can really talk to each other with respect. And then, then we're on the path of conciliation. After finishing the 13th painting, it felt incomplete. So I waited a few months. I needed to understand what colonization really looked like. It began with the arrival of early explorers. First contact. This painting is called colonization. So I did a flag of um, one of the early explorers that landed and put a red flag in yellow from Spain and I had a ship and and I did the, uh, they were worried about in Spain uh, falling off the end of the earth. They thought there was gonna, the ocean was dropping into the, the universe. So I did that. And so this piece is, it gives a sense of direction and I have smallpox and uh, a microscope of, of smallpox and it's uh, one of the things that came over and alcohol and, but also some gifts that came over, you know, uh, industrialization and, and, you know, some of the modern world that we appreciate now is some of the gifts that were brought over. So it, it gives a sense of, to people understanding what colonization looked like when it hit our world here, it hit Turtle Island or hit North America. On the whales back, there's trade beads and, you know, and the, and also part of the whale's face is North and South America. And it's a way for uh, people to have a sense, uh, and it's like a five foot painting long, and it's fairly narrow, and the framing on it is unusual because I had the metal frame, and we inserted wood, so it's like wood and metal. It's like native, or indigenous to uh, the industrial revolution of what Europeans brought over, the metal over. I struggled but uh, around my culture, but also I didn't even know I was struggling. I didn't even know I had a void. And that was a real revelation for me. So gaining uh, access to elders and spirituality and teachings, it rounded out my life in a way that's affected my art in a profound way. This one painting I did is different in a sense where I was given some tubes of, it's called Chinese white, and it's opaque watercolors, and I, and I never ever include that in my work, but I had some black watercolor paper, and I did this one, and, and it's of uh, this elder, he's like in his late 60s, sun-beaten face, and he just has this intense stare. But for me, the elders watching um, is, is like this, my connection to how elders, maybe they don't say a lot, but they're really watching what I'm doing. They're watching what others are doing, uh, indigenous people are doing. I'm sharing that in a way that uh, I feel very deeply honored and privileged to be in that place in my life to share that. Truth, art, and reconciliation. I'm ready. I'm ready for the world to see my work. I come to this place. This is one of my medicine places. I gather medicine. I come here for uh, shakams or cold water bathing, spiritual baths. And the cottonwood trees here are pro providing medicine. All through this river delta here is medicine. And the teachings are that we can come out here and we can come out here as indigenous or non-indigenous and we can feel the rhythm, 
the rhythm of where you feel spiritual, where you feel connected. So you can write your own song, you can sing your song, because this is how it was done long ago. You find your song. CM, Heitzepka CM, thank you, creator. Ooh.